I hope you enjoy my stories. Instead of just clicking thumbs down, please comment and share how we can do better. If you do like our video then please like and subscribe. In Douglas County, Colorado, a homeowner named Kyle Sarazen encountered a major issue. His problem arose with his local homeowners association. The issue began when Sarazen decided to add a unique twist to his Christmas decorations. Sarazen lives in Sterley Ranch. There, he took a creative approach to holiday decor. He transformed a 12-foot yard skeleton into Santa Claus. Not stopping there. Sarazen also turned smaller skeletons from his Halloween collection into Santa's reindeer. This display wasn't his first attempt at creativity. The decoration was an evolution of the previous year's effort. During the prior year, Sarazen and his wife had taken their giant skeleton and dressed it up. They positioned it as if it was decorating a Christmas tree with ornaments. Sarazen's inventive spirit aimed to bring a unique charm to holiday decorations. However, his creativity led to a significant challenge with his HOA. Motivated by a unique vision, Sarazen and the team sought to create something distinctive. They wanted to stand out and capture the public's imagination. Sarazen articulated their intent, clearly stating, We decided, let's just change it up. You don't ever see anything like this. Let's give everybody something unique to look at. Their goal was to break from the norm and introduce a fresh perspective. The result of their efforts was a captivating display. It quickly became a spectacle in the locality. People from all around were drawn to it. They stopped to take photos and admired the display. This creation turned into a talking point, something that couldn't be overlooked. While Sarazen's inventive twist on holiday decor garnered attention and perhaps even admiration from many, it wasn't long before he encountered opposition that dampened the festive spirit. The disapproval came from an official channel, no less, as Sarazen discovered upon receiving a formal notice from the Sterling Ranch Community Association Board, CAB. This body plays a pivotal role in maintaining the standards and regulations of the neighborhood, ensuring that every aspect of community life adheres to its established guidelines. The notice Sarah Zinn received was direct and unequivocal, pinpointing a specific breach in the decorum expected during the holiday season. According to the CAB, Sarah Zinn's choice to incorporate skeletons into his Christmas decorations was a misstep, a far cry from what was considered seasonally appropriate, according to the guidelines the community members were expected to follow. This interpretation of the neighborhood's holiday decoration policy put Sarazen's creative endeavor at odds with the CAB's expectations for traditional Christmas aesthetics, which typically involve more conventional symbols of the season. The correspondence from the CAB did not merely point out this discrepancy. It carried with it a clear ultimatum. Sarah Zen was presented with a deadline of seven days within which he had to remove the contentious decorations from his display. Failure to comply with this directive would lead to financial consequences. Sarah Zen found himself facing the prospect of incurring penalties that could surpass $200 if his skeleton-themed decorations continued to adorn his property through to mid-January. This time frame suggested that the CAB was prepared to enforce its policies well beyond the immediate holiday season, underscoring their commitment to upholding specific community standards. This situation highlighted a juxtaposition between individual creativity and communal expectations, placing Sarazen at a crossroads between expressing his festive spirit in a uniquely personal way and adhering to the collective norms of his community. Frustrated with the CAB's reliance on Google searches to justify their stance and their unwillingness to consider his perspective, Sarazen turned to social media, seeking support from his community. He shared his ordeal in a local Facebook group, posting the exchange with the CAB and images of his decorations. The post quickly garnered widespread support, evidenced by over a hundred comments. Many neighbors expressed their appreciation for Sarazen's display, with some even erecting their own skeleton decorations in solidarity in protest against the CAB's decision. The local community's response had a significant impact, leading to a notable shift in the stance previously held by the Homeowners Association. This change was communicated through a follow-up email that Sarazin received, which was penned by Jessica Towles, 
who holds the position of Director of Community Experience and Resident Support for the Sterling Ranch Community Authority Board, C.A. Bay. In her communication, Towles made it clear that the earlier violation notice issued to Sarazen was being formally withdrawn. She went on to express an understanding of the growing trend and acceptance of large skeleton decorations, which have gained popularity not only during the Halloween season, but have also become a festive staple for Thanksgiving and Christmas celebrations. Towles elaborated that upon further consultation and deliberation, the management team came to the revelation that such decorations indeed conform to the community's guidelines pertaining to seasonally appropriate adornments. This acknowledgement led to a decision to retract any previous complaints or concerns raised against such decorations. The primary motivation behind this adjustment in policy was to foster a sense of community harmony and to embrace the festive holiday spirit that these decorations bring to the neighborhood, thereby aligning with the broader interests and preferences of the community members. Towels provided further explanation, emphasizing that relying on Google searches to decide on compliance matters did not align with their regular protocols. This shift in approach, which was characterized as a move away from previous practices, aimed at ensuring a more equitable process. Particularly noteworthy during the holiday season, this change suggested a deliberate effort to adopt a broader and more accepting view regarding the regulation of seasonal decorations. The intention behind this reassessment was to promote fairness, acknowledging the diverse ways in which people celebrate and express holiday spirit. This adjustment in policy underscored a commitment to inclusivity, ensuring that the standards for compliance were not based on arbitrary or non-standardized criteria, but were instead reflective of a more comprehensive understanding of cultural and seasonal practices. After effectively challenging the initial decision made by the HOA, Sarah Zen announced plans to take a more active role in community activities. His ordeal underscored the critical role that participation and conversation play in managing community affairs, as well as the importance of advocating for individual expression within the norms of communal life. This event acts as a cue to the adaptive nature of holiday traditions and the vital role of community, backing and settling disagreements, promoting an atmosphere of inclusivity and festivity in neighborhood environments. HOA Nightmare I've had two run-ins with my HOA. Instead of having to pay my $1,100 HOA fees during those events, I've been strong-armed by lawyers to pay nearly $5,000. Seeking Advice First encountered a problem with my HOA in 2017. My wife at the time just got her PhD and was moving to NYC to start a job. I was there for a few months to help her get settled in. I kept my lawn up, but missed the notice. I discovered it about three months behind the due date, but I noticed they tacked on $125 per month penalty rules stipulated $25 per mo late fee. I immediately called to make a payment, but I questioned the inflated late fee. A nice gentleman transferred me to another guy's voicemail. I explained I wanted to pay, but thought the late fees were incorrect. He tried to call me the next day, but I was working and wasn't able to pick up. Finally, on the third day of phone tag, I spoke to him over the phone. He told me he sent the account to collections the day before. I'm like, WTF dude, I'm actively trying to contact you to pay. Guy was a complete asshole, refused to let me pay, wouldn't give me his full name, etc. Nonetheless, I get hit with legal fees, etc., making the bill about three times what it should be. I sent three letters to the legal firm, attempting to make payment arrangements. All were ignored. Went to court, spoke to the lawyer before meeting the judge and showed him my ignored letters. He agreed to let me make payments for the full amount over the next four months. Sorted. Although in hindsight, I regret not going before the judge to explain the situation and the shit I've had to deal with. Fast forward to 2023. Making payments, all is good. Then I get a bill, including late fees. Confused, I made four payments within four weeks, totaling the amount they were demanding. And then I get another collections letter from yet a different law firm. I called the law firm and left a message that I had been making payments and would be happy to show my receipts to a judge. 
day of court arrives, and I show up with my receipts, only to find out that the HOA's law firm requested the judge to move the date forward by one week. I was never notified, so didn't show up on that date, so a default judgment went against me to pay nearly $2,000 on a $375 bill. Then, conveniently, that same week, I get letter from the current law office that my previous payments were sent to the wrong payment processor. They changed payment processors again without notifying me. I'm still tracking down that money as it was never returned. Oh, and during this time, I was not allowed to use the pool or other facilities the entire summer. One board member called me out and threatened to call the police if I didn't leave, which sucks because I'm on short-term disability, and the only physical therapy I can do is exercise in the pool. Please note, I am not a troublemaker and never had a problem with my neighbors, but I am a single male and most of the married hags in the neighborhood hate it when I bring women to the pool. For reference, most of those women are pushing 250 pounds and I bring fit, pretty and young women with me, and their husbands have taken notice. I've gotten some flack for it, but it's none of their business and they have a choice not to be fat asses. Here's where it gets fun, as if that's not enough to deal with. The HOA changed property management companies in the middle of all this. I get another notice to pay almost another $2,000. My HOA fees are $375 twice a year. The notice mentioned something about legal fees again. Assuming they didn't get the memo from the other HOA management company that I was caught up. I attempt to log in to pay. My account is suspended and they put a lien on my home. So I looked up the payment address and sent the actual amount owed of $381. Payment returned. I then attempted to send them $400. Payment returned. I finally sent them $500, which they accepted. I get another statement today. They're demanding another $1,200. My plan is to send all the parties involved, two law firms, two property management companies, and two payment processors requesting all my documentation, requesting payments, fines, legal fees, etc. I also plan to keep sending in payments, approximately $100 per month, until everything is sorted out. At this point, I'd prefer to overpay than deal with this shit again. I found out the hard way. What happens if you attempt to resolve bogus late fees without sending payment first? But even though I'm still completely locked out of the payment portal, I can send payments directly from my bank account, which I will do going forward, because they can't lose my bank statements. What other advice would any of you have to resolve this? Also, what advice going forward would you have to screw with both the HOA and the property management company in legal ways? Here are my ideas. The HOA Board recently decided, without a vote, to fill in part of the pool with concrete, making it just small enough. They no longer have to employ a lifeguard. This pissed off many people and it puts children at risk. I intend to send letters demanding the reasons behind, savings involved, and why the neighborhood was denied a vote. There are some issues, sidewalks in poor shape, retention ponds with eroding edges, etc. I thought it would be nice to send them official letters demanding action on these things. If no action is taken after a reasonable period of time, take them to small claims court for the amount to have the repairs done myself. Maybe start a neighborhood petition to remove all HOA members and elect new ones, preventing the current ones from running again. Overall, the neighborhood isn't happy with many things, including the pool fiasco. The pool was already undersized built for the original one half of the first part of the neighborhood, but to make matters worse, another We All Thy neighborhood attached to ours recently, not only increasing our taxes, but they also use our amenities, with they all paying a dime in HOA fees. I'm open to all ideas. I have no problem sending letters and taking them to small claims court. I'd also like to hold the HOA. Board members more accountable for the poor decisions. The new property management company has VY low scores on Google. They're just not doing their job well and screwing around with members who are trying to live their lives. I'm also not beyond petty. As long as I can get my point across and preferably cause them some headaches and financial pain would be a huge bonus. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end.
to encourage us to make more videos. Please. Like. Subscribe. Comment. As well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.